sometimes an assembly is more than the sum of its parts. That's the case with Siemens Smart Low Voltage Switchgear. The individual devices are impressive, but it's only as an integrated and fully communicating assembly that the potential of the intelligent devices are realized. While Smart LVS uses a central processing unit with a user communication interface, the CPU is communicating with the intelligent devices, not replacing them. The intelligent devices are all completely functional and autonomous, and all circuit protection responsibilities and capabilities still reside with the embedded devices. Smart LVS comes pre-configured and pre-programmed from the factory, with the communication backbone already installed. All users have to do is physically connect the communication cable to the remotely mounted touchscreen interface panel. The interface panel, or HMI, is typically mounted on a wall in the electrical room where the low voltage switchgear is installed. The HMI provides access to the intelligent devices embedded in the low voltage switchgear. You can monitor, configure, and control them right from this panel. And the Smart LVS CPU can be configured to support an upstream supervisory system, no matter what the communication protocol. The CPU acts as the local master and as a remote slave to the upstream supervisory system. Using the CPU address map that is provided as part of the support collateral, the upstream system can access the embedded intelligent devices. Smart LVS has lots of benefits, but the main one is enhanced arc flash safety. Using Smart LVS, the operator can perform breaker operations that historically have a higher arc flash hazard risk from outside the arc flash hazard boundary. These operations include opening and closing breakers and racking breakers into connect, test, and disconnect positions. Smart LVS also helps reduce manufacturing and customer wiring. With Smart LVS, there's only one cable that runs from the low voltage switchgear to the remotely mounted HMI. With a typical hardwired remote control panel, there are multiple wires that need to be run. For example, using a WL breaker, you would need to run separate wires for the shunt trip, closing coil, auxiliary switch, cell switch, and ready to close switch from the breaker to the hardwired remote control panel. In the past, integrated remote monitoring, configuration, and control have only been available with the inclusion of optional upstream PMCS, PCS, DCS, or SCADA systems. With Smart LVS, remote monitoring, configuration, and control are standard features that are integral to the electrical apparatus product. These standard features include remote configuration, remote monitoring, remote control, arc flash hazard calculation, self-diagnostic data, preventative predictive maintenance data, environmental data, product documentation, as well as maintenance and status reports that compiles and summarizes data for all installed devices. When the Smart LVS touchscreen monitor is powered up and the equipment is energized, the user sees an elevation drawing on the HMI. This shows the exact configuration of the equipment. All of the intelligent devices are shown in their true physical location in the lineup. The elevation drawing acts as the home screen and allows the user to drill down to the intelligent devices. To do that, the user touches the device they want to see on the screen. All the indicating lights are real-time and show the current status of the breaker. For example, if the breaker is open, you see a green light. If the breaker is closed, a red indicating light is displayed. If the DAS or arc flash maintenance mode is activated, the blue light is dark blue. If the DAS is deactivated, the blue light is light blue. As an alternate to this screen, the user can utilize the associated one-line home screen to access all intelligent devices. The user simply touches the device symbol on the screen. A help screen assists in interpreting the color coding and symbols used on the elevation and one-line home screens. The user administrator screen lets the system administrator define and maintain user access rights. There are three user groups that define access rights. The first is view only. This access level allows the user to view or monitor all screens, but they can't modify any screen settings or control any devices. The second user group is control. 
It allows the user to monitor, configure, and control everything except the user administrator screen. The third user group is Administrator. This allows the user to access and control all screens, including the user administrator screen. The first breaker drill down screen that the user sees after selecting a breaker is the breaker control screen. Here, the user can open and close the breaker, activate and deactivate the arc flash maintenance mode, or rack a breaker into the connect, test, and disconnect position. The contacts, ready to close, and spring charge indicators are real-time indicators and show the current status of the breaker. To close a breaker, the user touches the close button on the screen. A secondary confirmation of the close command is required to avoid accidental closing or opening of a breaker. Using the WL Remote Breaker Racking Device, the user can remotely rack a breaker into the connect, test, or disconnect position. The current position of a breaker can be viewed from the elevation or one-line screens. To rack a breaker into a desired position, the user must open the breaker, withdraw the breaker racking handle, and attach the remote breaker racking device to the breaker. The control cable for the remote racking device is plugged into the receptacle in the front of the low voltage switchgear. The operator then selects the desired breaker position and touches the start button. The indicator will blink until the breaker reaches the selected position. The device always racks the breaker to the disconnect position first and then racks the breaker to the selected position. The precision quality of the breaker racking mechanism allows the racking device to count the required number of rotations to get to the selected position. When the breaker reaches the selected position, the indicator light stops blinking and remains lit. The position of the breaker can be confirmed by viewing the elevation or one-line screens. To access the breaker configuration and monitoring screens, the user selects the Breaker Monitor and Configure button at the bottom right-hand side of the breaker control screen. There are four configuration screens that are accessible from the Monitor and Configure screen. They are protective parameters, alarm thresholds, extended protective functions, and communications and metering. To drill down into a screen, the user just touches the appropriate button. If the protective parameters button is selected, the user sees the screen where the standard or parameter A settings are configured and saved. The WL trip unit has dual parameter setting capability. This trip unit feature basically functions as two separate trip units, integrated into one. At the Parameter A configuration screen, the user can configure the long time, short time, instantaneous, ground fault, and neutral parameters that support maximum coordination with upstream or downstream devices. To change a parameter setting, the user selects the parameter setting value, enters the new value, and confirms the changes by selecting the Activate Settings button. On the Protective Parameters configuration screen, the user can use the Integral Arc Flash Hazard Calculator to get an idea of what the Arc Flash Arcing Current, Incident Energy, Flash Protection Boundary, and Risk Hazard Level is, based on the Breaker Parameter Settings, Available Bolted Fault Current, System Voltage, and Type of System Grounding. The Quick Reference Arc Flash Hazard Calculator uses IEEE 1584 formulas to calculate the information. It isn't intended to replace a professional arc flash study, it is just a quick reference point. If the user selects the Parameter B selection on the Parameter A screen, they will switch to the Parameter B configuration screen. Here, the user can configure the arc flash maintenance mode settings that will activate when the DAS switch is set to on. Typically, the Parameter B instantaneous pickup setting is set to below the calculated arcing current. This ensures that the breaker trips instantaneously if an arcing fault occurs. If the instantaneous pickup isn't set below the arcing current, the breaker goes into the short time band before it trips. This results in a longer arcing duration and higher incident energy. The arc flash hazard calculator can also be used at the parameter B screen to calculate the arc flash hazard values that apply to the alternate parameter settings. 
using the arc flash hazard calculator here allows the user to visually see the benefits of the dynamic arc flash sentry option. The communications and metering setup screen is accessible and with the proper security access, the values can be field modified, but generally they're configured at the factory and not modified in the field. If the Extended Protective Functions option is selected at the Breaker Monitor and Configure screen, the user can access the protective relaying screen where parameters are defined and saved. The Breaker trips when the pickup and delay parameters are exceeded. A Help screen is also available that shows the appropriate setting and delay values for each protective relaying function. If the Alarm Thresholds option is selected, the user accesses the protective relaying functions that cause event alarms. Unlike the Extended Protective Functions parameter, the Alarm Threshold parameters do not result in breaker tripping. Only an alarm is activated. The Alarm Threshold parameter settings are displayed on two screens. There are six breaker monitoring screens that are accessible from the Monitor and Configure screen. To drill down to one of these screens, touch the appropriate button. The breaker metering screen displays various metering information, voltage, current, power, energy, and temperature. The breaker temperature monitoring sensors are located inside the breaker and in the cradle-mounted communication module. The harmonic analysis screen displays a bar chart representation of harmonic distortion relative to the selected breaker. Additional harmonic information, including waveform capture, can be downloaded directly from the breaker trip unit. The breaker overview screen displays general information about the breaker, including total number of operations under load and tripping operations. Estimated breaker main contact wear is also displayed. The last five breaker tripping operations are displayed on the trip log screen. The trip, reason for trip, and the tripping source is also displayed. Additional trip log history can be externally stored, but requires optional external memory. The event log screen displays the last 10 alarm events experienced by the breaker. Additional alarm event historical data logging is available, but requires optional external memory. The temperature history screen displays the maximum and minimum temperature for the breaker and the cradle. The temperature history is maintained until the history logging registers are reset. If the digital metering icon is selected at the elevation or one-line home screens, the voltage, current, power, and energy information for that associated meter is displayed. Selecting the surge protective device icon at the elevation or one-line home screen displays the SPD information. Color coding is used to represent the SPD condition. Green is normal, and red signifies that the SPD has experienced a surge event. Open Transition Auto Throwover Logic and Configuration is included in the Smart LVS product. The standard Auto Throwover Control screen assumes that the breaker protective relaying capability will be used and no external protective relays will be required. All pickup and delay setpoints related to automatic power source transfer can be entered and stored. If external protective relays, more than two power sources, or closed transition retransfer is required, the auto throwover logic and configuration screen will have to be modified at an additional cost. The environmental monitoring screen supports the optional remote monitoring of temperature, humidity, smoke, and water within the switchgear vertical structures. Monitoring sensors are installed inside each vertical structure and alarm set points can be set to drive visual and or audible alarms. Environmental monitoring is an optional Smart LVS product offering. At the bus sensor monitoring screen, the temperature of the bus bar bolted joints can be monitored. Horizontal bus bolted joints are monitored where the horizontal bus attaches to the vertical bus. Each phase and neutral are independently monitored. Temperature rise set points can be established that will generate an alarm. Bus sensor monitoring is an optional Smart LVS product offering. In addition to bus bar temperature monitoring, line and load power cable temperature monitoring is an available option. Individual sensors are used to monitor phase and neutral power cables. 
Alarm set points can also be utilized for cable temperature visual and audible alarms. The documentation screen allows the user to access all relevant support collateral. A complete set of as-built drawings are available for viewing and downloading. Additionally, reference manuals, spare parts list, and instructional videos are available. One thing is for sure. Siemens Smart Low Voltage Switchgear offers more features, is more efficient, and more productive. When you add it all up, it's just smarter.